What's up everyone, welcome to Film Spot, and today we will be talking about the best upcoming movies. Scream 7 is officially in the works, much to the happiness of fans after the enormous success of Scream 6 at the box office earlier this year. But this time the captain of the ship is going to be none other than Christopher Landon. That's right. Returning producer Spyglass Media Group have cast Landon to take over in place of Radio Silence's Matt Bettinelli Opin and Tyler Gillette. As of now, executive producers Bettinelli Opin and Gillette will stay on board as they were instrumental in the franchise's revival and directed the last two profitable films. Interestingly though, this new director for Scream 7 is only the third in the whole slasher franchise's history. We know that the series' uncommonness has helped it maintain its narrative coherence and win over audiences. So with Christopher Landon at the helm this time, fans should expect the franchise's winning record to continue and for the next installment to live up to their high expectations and scare the scare out of them. So are you ready to scream once again? After a strike that lasted nearly 100 days, that's right, and delayed the filming of countless TV episodes and movies, Hollywood studios have finally invited the Writers Guild to return to negotiations. And honestly, this could mean a lot of good things. Then again, there have been no plans for talks with SAG-AFTRA, the union representing the 160,000 striking actors, since the strike began last month. Similarly, there has been no communication between the parties since the strike began on the evening of July 12th. SAG-AFTRA's head negotiator, Duncan Crabtree Ireland, said the union is ready to resume talks at any time. He even stressed that talks between the parties were important for ending the strike and called for an immediate resume of negotiations so that the industry could resume normal operations. Currently, the management team has released a statement emphasizing their willingness to work out favorable offers with both unions, where the majority of film and television production cannot resume until a settlement is reached that is acceptable to both unions. What do you guys think? Will they finally be able to work out their differences? Now, because of the current dual union strikes that are causing disruptions to the operations in Hollywood, Sony Pictures is making some strategic alterations to the schedule for the distribution of its films. And honestly, there's not much to like. For one, the eagerly awaited picture Craven the Hunter, which stars Aaron Taylor Johnson, will now not be released by Marvel Studios on October 6th of this year as originally scheduled, but rather on August 30th, 2024. And because Taylor Johnson has upcoming commitments for a press trip, this change is absolutely necessary. Beyond that, it is quite evident how there has been an overwhelming amount of affection for Spider-Verses, which caused Sony to promise more installments in this well-liked universe. So with no further ado, let me give you the good news that you will definitely be seeing a brand new storyline for a brand new installment of Spider-Man. Here's a knockout punch for you though, while most of the cast information is still under wraps, it appears probable that everyone from Shamik Moore and Haley Steinfeld to Brian Tyree Henry will be returning given the film's cliffhanger finale. Sony has also presented a number of exciting upcoming projects at CinemaCon 2023, including Bad Boys 4 and Gran Turismo, where Will Smith and Martin Lawrence appeared in a video that highlighted their excitement for the production of Bad Boys 4, which is now underway. Of course, after the success of Bad Boys for Life, there is a lot of excitement about the upcoming sequel, which will have both returning cast members and new additions, such as Eric Dane in the role of the anticipated antagonist. Meanwhile, the hugely successful Venom franchise is also getting ready for the release of its third sequel, Venom 3, which is scheduled for the 12th of July 2024 in theaters, so that is also something you should mark on your calendars. Not to mention the series' track record at the box office ensures that it will be successful in the theaters, even though there is neither a trailer nor any video to promote it. Then again, if you are a fan of the first Ghostbusters movie, you should definitely anticipate the release of Ghostbusters Afterlife 2, a sequel that will feature both legacy characters and new cast members. Although it is not expected to be released until December, a photo taken behind the scenes provided a sneak peek at the series' recognizable firehouse. On the other hand, there is a problem for you if you are a fan of The Karate Kid. You see, the ongoing writer's strike and actor's strike have caused production delays for a new film in the franchise, which supposedly will star Jackie Chan. 
The initial release date of June 7, 2024 has been now pushed back as a result of these disruptions that have affected the entire business. But with hope, we move forward, right? Recently, Emily Blunt, star of the third and final installment, A Quiet Place Part 3, has recently released a fascinating teaser for the film. And looks like she's not quite done. A while ago, Paramount Pictures put down the hammer in February 2022 by confirming a third installment of A Quiet Place after its remarkable success at the box office. Fast forward to today, in a post-apocalyptic world filled with sound-sensitive monsters, the details of A Quiet Place 3 set to hit theaters in 2025 are being guarded more tightly than the mystery of stillness. Emily Blunt, ever lovely, has also dropped a few indications about the present rumblings in the A Quiet Place camp during a recent conversation with Josh Horwitz. Blunt set the mood by describing a night under the stars she spent with co-star Killian Murphy and her husband, John Krasinski, the creative force behind the first two films in the series. Blunt claimed she had conversations with both Killian Murphy and her husband, the film's director, John Krasinski, and that they were enthusiastic about continuing the series. So brace yourselves, everyone! Gal Gadot is keeping her fingers crossed that Wonder Woman 3 will be made despite the major changes happening at DC Studios. And honestly, fans are too. Recently, Gadot, while promoting her upcoming Netflix action picture, Heart of Stone, addressed the third Wonder Woman film with DC's new heads, James Gunn and Peter Safran, according to an interview with ComicBook.com. Yet in December of last year, allegations surfaced that Godot and filmmaker Patty Jenkins' plans for Wonder Woman 3, which they had developed, had met a hurdle after Warner Brothers officials declined to proceed with Jenkins' suggested storyline for the sequel. Now in the current DC picture slate, Wonder Woman is not listed, although the first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Still, there is still hope for a new Wonder Woman movie, so don't give up hope just yet. There are also no more details on this, but let's just give it time and see how everything turns out. Blumhouse's live-action adaptation of the famous game is creating a lot of buzz as the October 27th release date draws near. But for those of you who have trouble concentrating on one thing for too long, this update might be a little problem. Expected to have a duration of roughly three hours, the film version of Five Nights at Freddy's is currently in its last stages of production before its much-anticipated release. As for the plot, it centers on a security guard who works the night shift at Freddy's Fazbear's Pizzeria and learns that the place is overrun with terrifying animatronics, where the length of the film is one of its defining characteristics as it goes above the usual 90-minute limit for horror films. Then again, recent years have seen a number of successful horror films that buck the typical length of the genre, where Ari Aster's Midsommar and Lee Whannell's The Invisible Man remake are good examples. So given this trend, it's easy to see why people are so excited about the fresh cinematic adventure Five Nights at Freddy's promises to deliver, which transcends the typical horror film formula by going beyond the usual time limitations. And finally, the franchise's creator Jeffrey Reddick has delivered a positive update to the long-awaited horror sequel Final Destination 6. Talking to a media outlet, Reddick told that the sixth installment in the series is ready to go once the current strike action concludes. This time, the story will follow a group of friends who manage to dodge death before being methodically hunted down by an invisible entity that is the Grim Reaper himself. Reddick has also praised Guy Busick and Laurie Evans-Taylor, the writers of Final Destination 6, for their dedication to the series' core ideas while injecting new energy into the film. And while details about the release are still unknown, there has been speculation that first responders, including EMTs, firefighters, and police officers, may play a major role in Final Destination 6. Of course, nothing's confirmed as of yet. So you might have heard of actors who couldn't wait for the chance to play a savior or hero. Of course, this being Deadpool, we have to break the mold a little. Anyway, in an interview with Empire Magazine before the SAG after strike, Corin expressed their excitement about playing a villain in a forthcoming film. The actress, who uses they-them pronouns, talked about how excited they were to try out a new role without revealing who they were playing. Corrin was excited by the prospect to play a villain because it was unexplored ground for them. Additionally, director Sean Levy approached the actor after seeing their outstanding performance in a stage version of Virginia Woolf's Orlando. 
Corrin said that Marvel's customary opacity prevented them from understanding the idea at first. Despite this, they were still captivated by the mystery surrounding Levy's position to seek him out. As per recent reports and the interviews the actress has given, Corrin has thanked them for their participation and singled out the Deadpool installment for its critical awareness of and reflection on genre norms. At this point, we can't wait to see Corrin do justice to their character. We now live in a time where Marvel rumors continue to multiply every day, yet we still can't seem to get enough of them. Anyway, this time the rumors revolve around the highly anticipated Fantastic Four casting, with Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 star Vanessa Kirby said to be 95% confirmed to play Sue Storm, The Invisible Woman, and Stranger Things breakout Joseph Quinn said to be around 80-90% to confirmed to play Johnny Storm, The Human Torch. There have also been whispers that the planet-eating cosmic entity Galactus may play a major role in the story, which would bring back fan favorite and Galactus's herald, the Silver Surfer, pushing the upcoming installment to be nothing less than a blockbuster. Though there are no additional details about the movie, but we can do with this much right now if it means these rumors mature to be true. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.